Imagine standing in the doorway of your dream classroom. The classroom walls are filled with student work. There's laughter all around you and there's a genuine feeling of inspiration, but there's a catch. You don't have the job yet. That's okay because that's where we come in. In today's episode, we're going to unveil the secrets to not only get you inside of that classroom, but also to turn you into a force of nature as a classroom teacher. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, get ready to take some notes because we're starting right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Aberson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational leadership and your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any updates or any of our newest episodes. So today's a special one because today it's all about helping you break through in the next interview and get that dream job as an educator, as a professional educator, a teacher, somebody who is going to enrich the lives of the scholars that come into your classroom, that come into your life. So this is a special one because I remember, I remember my, I remember my interview like it was yesterday. I walked in fully suited and booted. I was hot and I was sweating and I was nervous, but I wanted that job really, really bad. And the principal, the wonderful principal who took a chance on me and gave me an opportunity. I'll never forget the questions that she asked, the way that she looked at me and the way that I could see that she was going to be somebody who inspired me. And so I wanted desperately to impress her. I wanted to have the right words in the right moment to answer the questions where she would be impressed, impressed enough to pick up the phone, call the district office, talk to the HR director and say, Gordon's on his way down to sign a contract. And I want the same for you. So what we're going to talk about today are three things. We're going to talk about three things that are going to give you ways to think about and ways to approach key things that are going to be on the minds, in my opinion, of every principal that you will talk to, every hiring committee that you might talk to. When you go into these interviews, what are the key things that you're going to want to be armed with and prepared to speak about in those interviews? So that way you can walk out of that interview, get in your car, drive to the district office and sign that contract. So we're going to jump right in and we're going to start with item number one. Let's talk about item number one. Item number one is you want to think immediately around how you share how important it is to have a safe and orderly environment in your classroom. I don't know how the question will come. I don't know what the form or the function of the question might be. Uh, it might be something as simple as share your philosophy on classroom management. It could be, how do you ensure that all of your scholars are safe? Uh, how do you have good, sound classroom procedures, rules? It could come in a number of different ways, but here's what I know. As a practitioner, every parent wants their child to be safe at school. And one of the quintessential skills of a good classroom teacher is to create an environment that is safe and as a byproduct of it being safe, it's also orderly. What does that mean? Do you have good procedures? Do you have good systems? Do you have written policies, written expectations? Are you communicating it effectively with your scholars, with your parents of your scholars? If you're an elementary primary teacher, there's gonna be a lot of communication back and forth with your parents to make sure that they know what your rules, what your procedures are, and what are the expectations that you have for your scholars. As you get into the upper grades, you get to middle school, you get to high school, you're gonna be having that dialogue and that interaction directly with your students and sharing what your expectations are with them, both verbally and then also posting it in written form and then making sure you're constantly alluding to it and you're constantly holding some accountability back to those procedures. But what is safety about? Well, safety is, is a core essential baseline function that you have to have. Learning can't happen if students don't feel safe. Effective teaching can't happen if you don't feel safe. So how do we create an environment? How do we make sure that we know what we expect and how do we communicate that to our students? And more importantly, as I'm sitting in the interview, how do I ensure that I'm communicating that to the principal? So the principal who's sitting across the interview table from me and listening to 
me? How am I conveying to them that vision for a very safe and orderly classroom? I think about examples of really sound, strong teachers that I've had the, have had the opportunity and the privilege of being around. And what did they do? They were consistent. They were firm, but they were always fair about how they went around keeping a safe and orderly environment. Students, scholars, they thrive on structure. They may, they may buck a little bit. They may not want it right away, but they do thrive when they know, they understand, and they can appreciate what it is that you're trying to create for them. And the way you do that is by being clear and by being consistent and being fair and equitable in how you apply that safe and orderly environment. So when you think about sitting in front of a principal, sitting in front of a interview panel or an interview, interview panel, think about how you will cast the vision for what it means for you to create a safe and orderly environment for your students. That is foundational. And then it builds off of strategy number two, which we're gonna get into right now. Now, strategy number two, I may be a little bit biased, but it's my favorite. Because strategy number two is all about building relationships. I'm an old school teacher, coach, HR person, finding people's talents, finding their skills, finding the things that are their natural gifts and helping them to be their best selves is all kind of in my DNA as a teacher and as an educator. So when you're thinking about, I've already created a safe and orderly environment. My students know what I expect. They embrace what I'm offering them. They know that I care about them. They know that I want to make sure that they have an environment where they are free to learn and explore and take risk. Now I have a rich, fertile environment to create enduring and robust relationships with my students, but also with my parents. And also those relationships, they're not only inside your classroom, they're outside your classroom as well. You should be building and creating relationships with your colleagues, your grade level team, your department, the staff, your classified staff, your management staff, whoever it is that you're coming in contact with professionally, you wanna create a strong interpersonal relationship with them. You wanna communicate with them effectively. You wanna communicate with them in a way that invites them into the conversation, invites them into dialogue and collaboration with you. It invites parents to be partners with you. This is all about how we build those relationships based on mutual respect, compassion, understanding, empathy for what challenges people may or may not be going through. So in the context of, a, of an interview, Again, how am I then now building off of, I wanna build relationships with my students, with my staff, with my colleagues, with my parents. And how do I, again, how do I cast that in the interview? What starts with knowing and getting, a, uh, knowing and getting to understand the experience, the challenges, the issues that people may have, may have had, may have, may have encountered, but also it, it's all about me exploring the best parts of my students, the best parts of my school community, the best parts of my colleagues and the staff that I work uh, as a part of. When I get curious and when I start to ask questions, that allows me to develop a deeper understanding and it allows me to create opportunities for relationship because relationship then creates the fertile opportunity for learning to happen. So again, thinking about the interview process is all about I don't know what those questions are going to be. When you are rooted in, I care about creating relationships, then when it talks about, well, how are you collaborative in your classroom? How are you collaborative with your students? How do you create an environment where students are ready and willing to take risk? Then you're talking about how you establish rapport and how you build relationships. How do you ensure that your parents know and understand that you are invested in their students' success? It's again, I communicate effectively with parents. I invite them into this space. I create partnerships with them. These are all things, these are different questions that might come up, but they're all rooted in how do I build 
relationships. So first, we want to create that orderly environment, that safe and orderly environment. And secondarily, we want to create relationships that create the, the connection and the glue that brings us all together. So now let's talk about strategy number three. All right, as we move into strategy number three, share with us in the comments below uh, one strategy that you use to build relationships with your students or one strategy that you use to build relationships with your colleagues. Share that with us in the comments below and don't forget to smash that like button if you're getting value. All right, let's talk about strategy number three. Again, it builds off of strategies one and two. Strategy one, build a safe and orderly environment, thinking about how you approach that in the teacher interview. And then after that, how do you build relationships and build rapport inside and outside of the classroom? That's strategy two. And strategy three, using those first two, now we're gonna focus on differentiating instruction by using data and being data driven. So we wanna be able to meet the needs of every single one of our students. They all have unique abilities. They all have unique perspectives. They all have unique lived experiences. So we have to quickly move away from the need, the desire to do the same thing for every single student. Instead, we wanna provide really quality, good first instruction. That is true. But we wanna then pivot and find ways to differentiate the instruction to meet the unique and individual needs of each of those learners. Everybody has natural skills, natural talents, natural abilities natural gifts that they've been given. And we have to explore that by then differentiating that instruction. But let's use data. Let's use evidence to drive those decisions. So what are those data sets? Informal assessments, formal assessments, classroom performance task, spending time in groups, walking your classroom, listening to conversations. All of these ways are ways to gather informal and also formal data that then will say, okay, so I know that these three or four students really can thrive. I'm gonna put them in a group and I'm gonna give them a certain type of performance task. But this group has a slightly different, they're more kinesthetic. They like to move around. They like to do a little bit more. They're a little bit more active. I'm gonna give them a different performance task, but I'm gonna leverage what I know that they are able to do and what I know that they can thrive in. This is then using this data and this evidence and this information to make a well-informed decision that is rooted in caring, nurturing, and recognizing the inherent gifts and talents of your students. Use data to drive that differentiated instruction model. But you can't use data and you can't differentiate instruction if you haven't done the first two things first. Doing the first two strategies and thinking about those first two strategies, build the foundation for then creating a rich environment where you can do differentiation, where you can do gradual release of responsibility and letting that data and that evidence show how you can have a rich, wonderful learning environment for all of your students. This is what you want to say and you want to convey in the interview. And these three frameworks are gonna help you be able to tap into specifically what the principal and what the interview panel will be looking for and candidates. There are lots of ways to approach interviews, but these are key components. These are key tenants, safe classrooms, strong rapport and relationships, differentiated instruction that's driven, driven by data informed decisions. I know these are the things that I'm looking for and I know I'm also coaching and leading our principals to also be looking for these types of attributes in new teacher candidates. So use these as resources so that way they can aid you in your teacher interview preparation and it can help you be successful in securing your next teaching position. But not only is kind of navigating this, but also the ability to navigate the beginning, the most stressful, the most anxiety written portion of the interview is the beginning. So if you check out this video, it gives you strategies and insights of how to crush the beginning of your interview and help you be successful throughout and get that next teacher job. Check this next video out and we'll see you on our next one. Thanks everyone.